Lower your ping with What the Fast. Fantasy Draft the LCS and win big at Vulcan.com. Use the code GAMINGCURIOS and Vulcan will double your first deposit. What's up guys, it's me, Jeremy. With the major differences that take place between competitive play and solo queue, there's actually a fairly decent amount of champions that perform really well in solo queue, but go completely unnoticed in competitive play due to some major weaknesses that can easily be exploited at the competitive level. And I like to look at these champs since it's something that will work great in solo queue, but pretty much has zero chance of getting nerfed since it doesn't succeed at the competitive level. Anyways, let's get started. Now, the main thing to consider is why a champion might be able to do well in solo queue, but suck in competitive play. And there are two main reasons that I could come up with. The first being that the difficulty of a champion is a major factor when it comes to solo queue. A champion that is easy to play has an advantage in solo queue, since you are less likely to get punished for your mistakes. But at the highest level of play, the competitive level, those kinds of factors are not significant since players are so incredibly skilled at punishing everything and at mastering champions, so that just straight up doesn't matter. The second point is counterplay that will completely wreck a champion, but is quite difficult to perform. This definitely is the most significant factor, and all the three champions I came up with that are fantastic in solo queue but suck in competitive play all have a major, major major counterplay factor that if punished perfectly, the champion kind of becomes useless. However, for those champions, the counterplay is so incredibly difficult to perform properly that you can honestly just completely ignore it in solo queue, and so you're left with a really strong champion. The first champion that sucks at the competitive level but does great in solo queue is Malzahar. Malzahar has two main weaknesses that prevent him from doing well at the competitive level. The first being that he has no mobility, which is somewhat relevant in solo queue, but still not as necessary since counter picks aren't that prevalent in solo queue. And the second being that his ultimate technically stuns himself. This makes it possible to dive onto Malzahar when he uses his ultimate on a target, or at the very least cancel it with some of your own crowd control. However, this requires some team coordination since it needs to be done really, really quickly in reaction to the ultimate, which is coordination that solo queue players just don't have. Malzahar's ult has loads of range and is pretty much a higher range, more damage Warwick ultimate, and in combo with the rest of his kit, and you're left with a mid laner that has insane pick potential, one of the best in the game actually, as the amount of plays you can make with it is just fantastic. His laning harass is quite strong as well, especially since his silence gives you a lot of free poke opportunities. And to top it all off, due to his targeted ultimate, he's pretty easy to play. He currently sits at an amazing 54 percent win rate in solo queue, and for good reason too. The next champion is Heimerdinger. Heimer struggles in competitive play due to the nature of his kit being anti-mobile and very zone oriented, where in competitive play the teams are coordinated enough to completely change the way they play to revolve around Heimerdinger's zoning, something that solo queue teams will realistically never be able to do. Heimer's laning phase is ridiculously strong since he has insane harass, crowd control, and some solid burst too with his ultimate. Ganking him is pretty much impossible unless he's already losing lane, which he realistically won't since he's constantly pushing and can easily poke under tower. In teamfights, it's really easy to fight around him since you can bait and kite really effectively, and his crowd control gives him some pretty reasonable pick potential too. Teamfights with Heimerdinger are not that difficult in solo queue at all since he has more than enough damage to kill tanks, so you can just kite around your turrets and fight under them for some pretty easy plays. He's honestly just extremely easy to play overall, while actually being really difficult to play against, especially when you don't know what to do against him, which a lot of people don't since he isn't really popular. He currently sits at a 55% win rate in solo queue, which is actually the highest in the game right now, and he definitely earns it. For my third champion, now I know she gets a lot of hate from all of the jokes online and stuff, but the third champion is actually Fiora. And I really think she is strong in solo queue. Fiora struggles a lot in competitive play because there's a lot of techniques and tricks that you can use to stop her ultimate, and she's really ultimate reliant. However, in solo queue, everyone kind of treats it as just something else that it's someone else's problem. And the mid laners aren't going to build a Zonius to counter her, they'll just stick to their own cookie cutter build or build 
build for their own lane opponent. The counterplay around her ultimate goes completely ignored in solo queue, where in competitive play the players are knowledgeable enough and will communicate enough to build up multiple ways to easily counter her ultimate. And this is especially prevalent for solo queue when you consider that just one thing that stops her ult usually isn't enough. Meanwhile, Fiora's kit performs really, really well. Her laning is pretty decent, and although she does have some bad matchups, if you get just one kill from a gank or a roam, all you need is just one item to just completely wreck people. Her assassination potential is fantastic, since her ultimate cannot be kited out, and it does a ton of area of effect damage, while if you ever get a flank off, it's really easy to destroy the backline of teams. Her mobility also gives her some great roams, and she can even initiate teamfights due to her ultimate allowing her to dive in to some extent, as long as your team can follow you up of course. Her trading in lane and sustain is fairly decent due to her passive and so you can get out of lane fairly easily, and in teamfights you can transition to an assassin or a split push role and her mobility creates some nice nice pick potential. She currently sits at a very solid 53% win ratio in solo queue, and I honestly do think that she's really good, but she is a little bit more difficult to play than the first two champions that I mentioned. Anyways, that just about wraps it up. My name is Jeremy, and that's it for my first video on champions that are good in solo queue, but suck in competitive play. Hey guys, it's me, Jeremy. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, definitely make sure to hit that like button so I can tell, and if you're interested, definitely check me out over on all the socials, of which you can see over there. And if you really enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for some more awesome content in the future, and definitely check out some of my other videos as well, up here and over there. Anyways, that's going to be it. Thanks again for watching, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.